morning, ladies. I hope you're ready to learn a lot about accruals and deferrals. We're gonna be talking all about that in chapter four. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my screen so you can see that, and we will get started. Okay. So we're continuing on with the accounting cycle. Several of our chapters are gonna be titled the accounting cycle, but then we're gonna have different categories that we talk about each time. So this time is accruals and deferrals. So first we're gonna talk about adjusting entries. So accruals and deferrals are all things that are gonna adjust the financial statements. So why do we do these adjusting entries in the first place? Okay, so business transactions often affect revenue and expenses across multiple periods. So there, we're gonna look at a lot of examples of those today, but just remember that it's not always, if you're doing an accrual basis accounting instead of just cash basis, everything, you don't necessarily get the cash in in the same period that you need to recognize the revenue. You don't necessarily put the cash out in the same period that you actually incurred that expense. So again, we're gonna look at examples of that so that it makes sense because I know right now it's probably very confusing. And what we ultimately want is the financial statements to be the best representation of the activity in that period. We want the financial statements to be true. We want them to reflect the revenue that we did bring in in that period. We want it to reflect the expenses that we actually incurred. So that's why we need to do these adjusting entries. Let me give you an example. If you read the beginning of chapter four, it gives you an example about cruise ships. Okay, so let's think about a cruise. When you book a cruise, you typically would pay for a portion of that cruise, a percentage of the money that's due would be owed right at the beginning, right when you purchase it. And then you would probably pay a little bit more a few months before the cruise, and then you may pay the final balance when it's time for you to actually go on the trip. Okay, so that's a little confusing. So how does the cruise company reflect revenue? If I give them money today in September, if I give them money in September for a cruise in December, do they recognize revenue in September or in December? Because they haven't actually done anything for that money I've given them in September. So in all honesty, they would report that as unearned revenue, which is a liability account. Okay, so I've given them money, but they've done nothing to earn it so far. So that's actually a liability, liability to them. I have given them cash and they still have an obligation to perform a service in order to earn that revenue. So we'll look at that kind of thing, those kind of entries in just a minute. Another example is magazine subscription. That's probably not something that we're real big on now with the internet, but if you subscribe to a magazine, you're gonna pay the amount for probably 12 issues over a 12 month period. So let's say I paid $100 and I wanna get a magazine every month. Well, only a 12th of that $100 is going to be earned by that magazine company each month. Okay, so they can't say in January that they earn that $100 because they haven't earned it yet. They've only given me one issue of the magazine at that point. And so they can only recognize revenue of a portion of the money that I've given them at that point. Okay, so hopefully that's starting to make sense, but we're gonna look at that more in detail. So we have four different types of adjusting entries. First, we have entries that we are converting assets to expenses, okay? So when we convert assets to expenses, we have an amount that we have already paid, but we have not incurred that expense yet. My favorite example, and probably the main one you would see in real life, is prepaid insurance. So when you pay for insurance, you, if you do a six month period, then you're gonna pay 
upfront six months worth of insurance. I have not actually incurred that expense for all six months of insurance. I'm paying it ahead of time. So that's actually an asset to me. I have already paid somebody money for something that I have not even used that expense for yet. Okay, so each month as I incur some of that expense, as that insurance expires a little bit more each month, then I'm going to recognize a little bit of that asset. So let me show you that in the example with this journal entry. So let's say January 1st, I paid $6,000 in cash so that we could have our insurance policy for the next six months. Okay, so $6,000 in cash for six months, that means each month it, it's costing me $1,000 for insurance, right? 6,000 divided by six months. Each month is $1,000 in insurance expenses. Okay, so I have decreased my cash. You see the credit of cash right there. Well, I have increased the asset of prepaid insurance because as of right now, I have not used up any of that insurance. I've paid it ahead of time. I haven't used any of it up yet. But each month, as that insurance starts to expire, as I incur that expense, that's when we are going to record insurance expense, which remember our expenses are always debits because they are decreasing our profit, which ultimately goes into retained earnings. And then we are going to, at that point, credit our asset of prepaid insurance for the, amu the amount that we've used in that month. Okay, so again, we had $6,000 that we paid in cash for our insurance policy but that's gonna cover the next six months of insurance. So as each month goes on, we're gonna recognize a sixth of that in our expenses. So in February, that's our first month that we're actually incurring that expense. We're actually having that insurance policy cover us. So we are going to recognize an expense of $1,000, and we're gonna decrease our asset of 1,000 which means our prepaid insurance asset would now be $5,000 because we have incurred $1,000 of an expense from that asset. So hopefully that's starting to make a little bit of sense to you. This would be the same case for your insurance in your personal life if you pay on a six month basis. So if you're paying auto insurance, you pay that up front and you're paying ahead of time even though if you decided to cancel that insurance three months down the road, you would get three months worth of that money back. And that's why it's an asset. It is a financial benefit to you that you have already paid it ahead of time. And usually we pay it ahead of time because we get a discount or for companies they might require us to do it that way. Our second type of adjusting entry is let's see, did we put it up there? Okay, that <laughs> came up weird. Is converting liabilities to revenue. Okay, so we have a liability on the books. This is gonna be kind of like the cruise ship. So we have a liability like unearned revenue, or you could call it customer deposits. So the customers that are gonna go on vacation have given you a deposit. They have given you some of the money, but they have not enjoyed the services of going on the cruise yet. So that at this point is unearned revenue, or again, you could call it customer deposits. So this is the initial entry. On February 1st, a customer paid us cash of $5,000 for a cruise that they're going on much later in the year. So right now we're gonna record that as a liability because it is something that we are gonna have to fulfill later. They've given us the cash, we owe them, a service or a product, okay? So we're gonna record unearned revenue, which is a liability of $5,000. Then when the cruise actually comes and we have fulfilled our service, we've fulfilled our side of the bargain, at that point we are gonna debit unearned revenue, the liability, so we're getting rid of that unearned revenue for that customer. And then we're gonna recognize revenue with a credit. Remember, whenever revenue is earned, we recognize it with a credit because ultimately it goes into owner's equity, 
which is a normal credit balance. Okay, so the adjusting entry on both of these that we just looked at is the entry we make once we have incurred the expense or once we have earned the revenue. So we are adjusting that liability to now be a to now be recognized as revenue. All right, so let's move on to our no, okay, that one's doing it weird too. To our third type of adjusting entry. This is accruing unpaid expenses. Okay, so at this point, we haven't given anybody cash and nobody's given us cash yet. Instead, we know that we have used up a good or a service and we are going to owe it in a different accounting period. Well, we need to recognize today or in this period that we have used this expense, even though we haven't been billed for it yet. So here's an example, salary. Okay, so do you get paid every single day at your job? No, most likely you do not, unless you're getting paid under the table, right? Instead, you get paid probably on a every two week basis or twice a month. So your company has already used the expense of your wages they've already had you come and work for them they've already had that labor but they're not paying you until maybe the next month so in this situation on march 30th we have a salary expense of four thousand dollars so we've had employees work four thousand dollars worth but we haven't paid them for that yet because that paycheck is going to come out next month so we also have a liability for the $4,000. We still owe them money. We have incurred that expense. We've already used their labor, but we still owe them money for that. So we have an expense and a liability since we still have an obligation to fulfill. So both of those are for $4,000. We now have decreased revenue by $4,000 with that expense, with decreased net income and we have created a liability to pay our employees in April for the work they did in March. So then we would record this entry once we actually pay them. So here we are in March, it's time to actually give them their paychecks. So we're gonna decrease that payable because we no longer owe them that. And then we're also gonna decrease cash for $4,000. So that is accruing unpaid expenses. So we need to recognize the expense in the accounting period that it was incurred, even if we haven't paid it yet. Our fourth type of adjusting entry is accruing uncollected revenue. So we've looked at this kind of entry several times. So I don't think you're gonna be surprised by it at all, but sometimes we earn revenue but we don't get paid for it until another accounting period. That's when we create an accounts receivable. So let's say that we sell tools and a company bought $2,000 worth of tools. Well, that is recorded as revenue in the period that we sold them the tools. But if they're not gonna pay us until the next period, then we need to go ahead and record an accounts receivable, knowing that they still owe us that money for the revenue. Okay, so let's say in March, we sold them the tools for $2,000. So we are going to create an accounts receivable because they're still gonna owe us. And we're going to record revenue earned of $2,000. Then once they actually pay us, we are going to record an increase in cash with a debit and then a decrease in accounts receivable because they do not owe us that $2,000 anymore. So those are the four types of adjusting entries. And we're gonna look at a lot more examples of those. So if it's not all clicking yet, then don't get too concerned, but you can always reach out with me to me with more questions. Okay, so here's just a little diagram of what it looks like to convert assets two expenses okay so we've already talked about this type of adjusting entry but we want to look at it again okay so in the prior period we were we paid cash in advance 
in advance of incurring the expense, okay? So we paid cash before we actually incurred the expense, before we actually used up the good or service. So that creates the asset, okay? Just like the prepaid expense that we talked about. And then when we get to our current period, we're going to do our adjusting entry to recognize a portion of that asset consumed as expense, okay? So we've created an asset for the amount that we've paid for something that we haven't incurred yet. And then when the time comes that we have incurred a portion of it, we're gonna recognize that as an expense and decrease our asset by that amount that we've incurred. So this is just like the prepaid insurance. And then going forward, we'll still have a balance in the future if there's still some of that prepaid expense left over. So each period we will recognize an expense until we've consumed all of what we paid ahead of time. Okay, so this is another example besides our insurance, prepaid insurance. Shop supplies benefit in multiple periods. Okay, so we bought a bunch of shop supplies. So whatever that may be, let's say we are, we're doing the auto loan, I mean the auto repair service, and we have bought several filters and several um, things of oil, you know, I don't know a lot about auto services, but they bought a lot of supplies that we're going to consume over the next several accounting periods. So we're going to go ahead and since we bought that ahead of time, we're going to have to decrease cash, but we're not using all of the shop supplies right away. So first we are going to increase an asset of shop supplies. So we've created shop supplies asset as of December 31st with a balance of $1,800. Okay, so this is the balance. If you look in your book, you'll see a trial balance. It was way too big for me to put in one of these slides, unfortunately. But we bought the supplies at some point in the year. And now when we have our trial balance at December 31st, we're still showing a balance in shop supplies of $1,800. Well, in December, we actually used a portion of that. We used $600 worth of our shop supplies. So we need to do an adjusting entry. We need to do an adjusting entry. My dog just heard somebody knocking. And we are going to record a portion of that as supplies expense for $600. So we used up $600 worth of the shop supplies in December. So we're going to record a shop supplies expense and we're gonna decrease our asset of shop supplies by $600. That's gonna leave us with $1,200 in that shop supplies asset going into the next year. Okay, and then this is the insurance policy like we already talked about, but this is a little more of a diagram looking at that. So if we paid $18,000 on an insurance policy, that's gonna cover us for 18 months, it would look something like this. So every month, we are actually incurring the expense of $1,500. So you've got March 1st when you're paying the insurance policy of $18,000, but you're not going to be done consuming it until the next year on March 28th. So every month, you are going to incur an expense of $1,500. That's $18,000 divided by 12 months. Each month, we're going to recognize a portion of that prepaid asset in the expense account. All right. So this is what it's going to look like in the beginning, okay? So initially, we pay that insurance of $18,000. You can call it prepaid insurance or you can call it unexpired insurance. Again, it just has to be clear to the reader what it is that we're paying or what it is that that account represents. So on March 1st, we paid $18,000 in an insurance policy that's gonna last us for 12 months. So we are increasing our asset of unexpired insurance and decreasing our asset of cash by 18,000. Okay, 
So our adjusting entry at the end of each month would look like this. We are recognizing an expense of $1,500 because now a whole month of insurance has expired. So we take that 18,000 divided by the 12 months, which would be $1,500 a month, that we're gonna recognize an expense. So we say insurance expense is debited because that's how you recognize an expense of $1,500. And then our asset of unexpired insurance decreases with a credit of $1,500 as well. All right, last slide we're gonna look at for this lesson is how it impacts the financial statement. So this just shows that same $18,000 of unexpired insurance. When we first put it in the T account, we put it as a debit. And then at the end of the month, we had now incurred the first month of expense for that asset. And that is $1,500. So we put that on the right hand side of the T account, which is going to decrease our balance that would now be recorded on the balance sheet to 16,500. And then our income statement, we're gonna put the expense on the debit side, on the left-hand side, because that's how we decrease our income, that's how we decrease our retained earnings. We are going to do a debit of $1,500 to recognize the expense that we incurred for insurance for the month of March. All right, hopefully this is starting to make sense to you. And we will talk about this a lot more. And please reach out with any specific questions you have already. Make sure you are looking at the book and reading through. Everybody learns different ways. So reading through the book can definitely help you out as well. But let me know what questions you have and make sure you watch all the lectures and do the homework and quiz.